What's happening, people? It's me again, Courtney, doing my MMA predictions. This time it's UFC 140, which will play, take place on Saturday, the 10th of December, um, at the Air Canada Centre in Toronto. Um, it's John Jones versus Leonardo Machida for the Light Heavyweight Championship. Um, the car's looking good. Um, it's for the old school fans, the old school UFC and Pride fans. Um, but you know, there's plenty of other fights on there, decent fights anyway. Um, I'll start at the bottom of the main card, which I think is a main card anyway. But the fight they've got at the bottom is Mark Harmonic versus Chang Sung Jung. Um, I think they should change that around with something else, Put it, push it further up the card. But anyway, I'll start with that fight. So we've got Mark Harmonic, um, well known fighter, very good fighter. Uh, he's 20, he's got a 29 record, it's 5 foot 8. Um, was in the UFC previously, I think he was at a lightweight, but now he's back at featherweight. Um, he's a very hard puncher, power puncher. Um, he can take a beating as well, as, as witnessed in his last fight against Jose Aldo. Aldo gave him, his real name should be Mark the Hematima. Hematima? Hematima. Hematima, Hematima. Hominic, because, boy, Aldo gave him something to go home with. It was like this. His eye was looked like this. Um, Hominic's fiance or wife was due um, around the time when he fought Aldo, um, but I always said the child was born from his head, his eye, because he was that big. But anyway, <laughs> Hominic, yeah, he's got a lot of heart. Um, as I said, his last fight, <clears throat> last fight was a loss against Jose Aldo. Um, previous to that, he had four wins. So in his last five fights, he's had four wins, one loss. Um, and according to John Petit from MMA Recap, um, Hominic is minus 400 to all you betting people out there on the odds. And he's fighting Chang Sung Jung, better known as the Korean Zombie. This guy walks with punches, whatever you throw at him, he will walk through it. He's got an 11-3 record, he's 5 foot 9. Again, his odds are plus 280. Um... Chang Sung Jung can take a punch, walks people down, never backs down really, um, has a good chin. Um, you know, he punches a bit wild, but his punch, he does he does do well, he does really well. Um, he's quite well rounded as well, and as we've seen in his last fight against Leonard Garcia, he has submissions. I mean, who's gonna try some? He tries a twister in an MMA match, but he pulled it off and he made it. You know. <coughs> um, his last five fights, he's had two wins and three losses. But, you know, of those fights, probably three or four of them at least are very entertaining. He's responsible for some, what, two of the most entertaining bouts between him and Leonard Garcia. Um, but, yeah, that's Chang Sung Jung. Um, for this fight, I'm going Hominic. I think Hominic's going to be a bit bigger, a bit more powerful uh, than Chang Sung Jung. Um, and I think he may stop him. So I'm picking Mark Hominick to win that one. I'm going with the favourite. Um, next fight on the card is Claude Patrick versus Brian Eversole. Um, I think Brian Eversole was supposed to fight Rory McDonald, but McDonald pulled out injured. So the Claude Patrick stepped in. Claude Patrick, Canadian guy, he's got a 14 and one record. He's five foot ten. Um, from what I've seen with Patrick, I think I've seen two of two of his fights. He's got a very good cardio, got a good work rate. Um, well, he's decent. He's got a wicked guillotine. Um, you know, he's never been finished either. I don't think I've lost his record. He's never been finished. He's lost one fight and he's lost that by decision. So he's never been finished. Um, and his last fight was a win against Daniel Roberts. I think that was by decision. His last five fights had five wins. Um, his odds are minus one fifteen. He's fighting Brian Eversole. Brian Eversole has got a veteran. He's got. A Stupid record, 48, 14 and 1. The guy is, what, 31? And he's had that many fights. There's some of the fights, like in 2000, I think it was in 2002, he had 11 fights. A fight a month, nearly? Jeez. Um, he's 6 foot. He's uh, minus 125, according to John Petit at MRA Recap, with the betting odds. Um, as I said before, he's a veteran. He's got massive experience. Um... Was it not lost since 2008? Um, he's on a nine fight winning streak. Um, with his last fight, I think, he, yeah, he was the guy with the big arrow shaped on his chest. Um, when he beat Dennis Horman, 
uh, beaten by elbows. I think it, that was when Dennis Long was wearing those stupid. Oh, stu- <coughs> he's wearing the. Um, basically, he's wearing the speedos with the training mask logo on the front of them. Um, and his last five fights, Brian Ever sold his five wins. Um, for this fight, um, I'm going with. I'm going with Eversol. Um Patrick is good, well rounded, has got cardio, but I think um Eversol, I think he could probably do it. But he's got a lot more experience and you know yeah, I think Brian Eversol I'm gonna pick for the win. Um next on the card is Tito Ortiz versus Antonio Rogerio Nogueira. Um, everyone knows Ortiz, big mouth, big head, former light heavyweight champ for a number of years. He's got a 16, <coughs> excuse me, 16 9 and 1 record. He's 6 foot 2. Um, Ortiz, not really involved with the game, I don't think, as much as he'd like to. Uh, he's got a decent ground and pound game. Um, he has got decent kickboxing. If you ever watch Tito Ortiz on the pads, for years I've been saying this, he's all right on the pads. When he's in the ring, man, he seems hesitant. He doesn't really want to kick, or he doesn't really want to mix it up with people with the, you know, the kickbox. He always wants to, bah, 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 a little bit, and then try and take him down, you know. But he's all right on the pads. Same with Rampage as well. He's okay on the pads. It's decent if he throws his kick. They have confidence in his kicks and punches. Um, you know, his last fight was a TKO loss against um, Rashad Evans, but he took that fight on short notice. I think it was to do with the hype around. He beat Ryan Bader by a guillotine. Um, but, you know, Ortiz has been in the game for a while. His last five fights, he's had one win and four losses. Um, anyone else in the UFC would have got cut by now, but Ortiz, big personality, sells fights. Um, you know, I think he's regarding himself as a people's champ now as well. Um, a bit like Charles Salmon. But, you know, there you have it. Um... But he's fighting Little Nog, as we like to call him, as he's affectionately known. Now, he's got a 19 and 5 record, he's 6, six foot 2. Um, Nogueira, I think Little Nog's got better boxing than Big Nog. Um, he's got decent kicks as well. His Jiu Jitsu is good for MMA. Um, he can take a beating just like his bigger brother, um, not bigger, heavier brother, can take a beating like him. Um, his last fight was a loss to Phil Davis by a decision. Uh, in that fight, he just got outworked. Phil Davis, you know, looks like something, you know, you put together in a game. You know, like you put the arms together. I want this arm, I want this wide shoulders, I want this big thigh. No, he just looks like something you put together in a game. Um, but yeah, his last, Nogueira's um, last five fights, he's had three wins and two losses. Um... The odds for this fight, T.O.T.'s plus 175, Antonio Rodri- Rodrigo Nogueira, not Rodrigo, Rogerio Nogueira, 225, minus 225. Nogueira is the favourite. I would class him as the favourite as well. I'm not sure how T.O. is going to win this fight. Um, Nogueira could keep it standing if he wanted to and beat him up on his feet. Um, and even if he goes to the ground as well, I think he could submit Ortiz. Um but you know, that's the way I go. So I'm picking Antonio Rogerio Nogueira. That's right. Yeah, I'm sure it's Rogerio. Yeah, the smaller one. Little Nog gonna win. Uh, next fight on the card is Frank Murr. His name is Frank Murr. Please take note. Um, fighting Antonio Rodrigo Nogueira. Big Nog. Um, Frank Mir, former UFC heavyweight champion. Um, he's got a 15 and five record. He's six foot three. Uh, Frank Mears, over the uh, over the, the last two years, he's evolved. He's actually evolved. His boxing's got better, kickboxing better. Um, you know, just uh, he's massive as well. Before he was big, but now he's a lot bigger, man. He's it was like the Holocaust. Or he's big. Um, <coughs> six foot three, two hundred sixty-five pounds, solid. Um, yeah, as I said, he's big, big, strong guy. Good boxing, good kickboxing, good jiu-jitsu. His jiu-jitsu for MMA is wicked. Um, can submit a lot of guys. Broke Tim Sylvia's um, forearm, which I personally... Uh, Tim Sylvia gets on my nerves. Um, 
uh, I won't go into that. But anyway, um, Frank Mir, you know, um, in his last couple of fights, he's, you know, his cardio's not looked too great. Um, but, you know, and he's got the advantage of, of Big Nogueira because he's already beat him. Um, in his last five fights, he's had three wins and two losses. Two losses came against Shane Conway and then Brock Lesnar. Um, he's beat Crow Cop, Roy Nelson, and I think he beat Big Nogueira as well. Um, Antonio Rodrigo. I, I'm not, I don't know, probably getting this wrong anyway. Anyway, Big Dog. He's got a 33 6 and 1 record. Former Pride heavyweight champion. If you have not watched Pride, please look it up on YouTube or anywhere else. Pride FC, Pride Fighting Championships. If you're ever wondering what Joe Rogan and Mike Goldberg are talking about, people say Pride, go and look for it on YouTube. Very, very big telling you um and he was the former um ufc interim headweight champion as well Ugh, i don't really count that he was you know he won the belt for a bit um as i said Nogueira, veteran got mass experience decent boxing good jiu-jitsu but you know he's getting a bit older he's taking a bit too many beatings um he didn't use his head as a punching bag so much against brendan schwab um, and he surprised me in that fight because he came out quick, really quick. I don't know, uh, Brendan Schwab didn't know what hit him basically because Nogueira came out quick, really quick, quicker than I thought. I thought he was going to come out a bit slower than normal. But he got to him first and battered him. Um, as I said, his last fight was a win against Brendan Schwab by a KO. His last five fights had three wins and two losses. Um, the odds on this one Frank Mir is the favourite, minus 250. Nogueira is plus 210. Um, I don't know where, which way this fight's going to go um, I see Frank May doing sort of the same thing again I don't know if Nogueira is going to be able to uh, Nogueira is definitely going to try and knock him out um, obviously standing but I don't know if he, he I don't know if Nogueira will take it down and try and change the game um, but I still I'm picking Frank May to win Frank Murrow to win the fight um, I think he's going to decision Nogueira um, if he doesn't, he'll knock him out again. Um, Nogueira's head cannot take much more of a beating. So there you have it. Frank Murray is going to win the fight. Um, and then we go on to the main event. Um, John Jones, UFC light heavyweight champion. The one. 14-1 um, record. You know, everyone's talking about this guy um, as the next best, the next big thing. Will be one of the greatest UFC champs ever. Um, you know, John Jones, very unorthodox, got his own, you know, he throws anything in there, he'll throw spinning elbows, do, he'll basically do what he wants. If he sees it in Street Fighter or Tekken, he'll do it. Um, you know, I always describe him as like um, the character Shaft, he just don't give a, you know, he just don't give a damn. Basically, he just does what he wants. Um, obviously, yeah, in his fights, he's been pacing himself, so if you watch against it, even... Shogun and you know Rampage he's pacing himself in the fight and picking his shots you know um, he's not really running into it whereas before against I think it was his first or second fight against Stefan Bonner third round he was tired because he was going really quickly he was tired so he's pacing himself better his strikes got a vast array he just pulls them out from anywhere and just you know does what he wants he finishes up he's a fight finisher as well he's got a long very long reach um you know, and his last fight was a win against Rampage Jackson. Um, you know, was, you could just see, I picked Rampage to win on, basically I wanted Rampage to win at heart. I was thinking, come on Rampage. But, you know, John Jones just, you know, just beat him up basically. John Jones, last five fights, all five wins. But he's fighting Leo Tomachida. Um, he's got a 17-2 record, he's six foot one. Again, Machida's an orthodox. Because he uses karate style to keep away counter punch, um, you know he can go five rounds easily. Um, he picks his shots as well, so they're sort of similar fighters. But um, Machida doesn't really come forward as such. John Jones will go forward, will go after you. Machida won't, but he may change his game plan for this fight because against I think it was Rashad Evans, he actually came forward and made Rashad Evans do the skanky leg. Um, 
Machida's got jiu-jitsu, karate, um, judo and sumo, which helped him out. In his last his last fight was a KO win against Randy Couture when he done the old school front kick. Um, don't tell me Steven Seagal showed you that kick because it's rubbish. I was doing that in my school playground when I was six. Don't ever tell me Steven Seagal can go by it, but he invented that kick. Hell no. I didn't see no videos of you when I was six. So where the hell did that come up with? I invented it. That front kick. Same, sent Randy Couture's tooth. <laughs> Rose Ed. Um, but yeah, Machida. Uh, last five fights, they had three wins and two losses. The two losses, one a dodgy one against Rampage and a KO loss against Shogun. Um, the odds for this fight, John Jones is the favourite, minus 445. Uh, four, four, Machida, plus 350. This fight, I think, I'm going to say, I'm going to go with John Jones. Um, unless Machida comes forward, then he hasn't got a chance, I don't think, because... John Jones is going to be throwing everything at him, plus the kitchen sink. So if he doesn't come forward, you know, it's going to be, he's going to be in for a painful night. So it all depends if Machida is going to come forward. Jones is going to do his usual thing and pace himself, kick, stamp on his knees and, you know, things like that. But Machida, it's all what Machida does. It's not about what John Jones does. It's what Machida does. If he wants to win, he's got to do something different. He can't be on the back foot against someone that's got longer reach than you, that's taller than you. Because they'll knock your head off. So Machida's got to change up his game and come forward, possibly. Um, that's the way I see he could win, but I don't think he's going to win. Because I think he's going to stay on the back foot. So I'm picking John Jones. I'm going with the favourite John Jones to retain his light heavyweight championship. Um, but yeah, those are my predict predicts. Those are my predictions. Those are my picks. Um, what was I going to say? Big shout out to Dustin from Ethic Fight Co. Go check out that website, ethicfightco.com. Um, check out the place where I'm supposed to be training, but I haven't trained for about two months because, you know, I haven't. LeicesterMMA.co.uk. Um, check out TweetMMA.co.uk. MMAPundit.co.uk. Anything grappling related, you know, lapelchoke.com. Um... There's those other places. But anyway, you can follow me on Twitter with the same username, Choku. Um, subscribe to the YouTube channel. Tell your friends about me. Um, I'm on Google+. Plus. I've got a Tumblr uh, thing as well. The links are all below or wherever. I'll put the links in down there. Um, and I possibly, I'm still talking with the idea of setting a Facebook page as well. Just for the videos. But anyway, holler. Let me know what you think. Peace.